Hello, I'm attorney Deandra Grant, and this segment is going to cover breath alcohol testing in Texas using the Intoxilizer 5000 instrument. The Intoxilizer 5000 instrument has been used in Texas for more than 20 years. It is not new technology. We are currently transitioning to the Intoxilizer 9000, which should be online in Texas the latter part of 2015. However, the actual way the instruments work as far as measuring breath alcohol hasn't changed. Uh, the way they do it's changed a little bit, but the underlying science has not. So basically what happens when you blow into an intoxilizer instrument? There is a sample chamber. It's about this size inside the instrument. With the intoxilizer 9000, they changed the size of the sample chamber, but the technology is the same. There is a light source inside the instrument, and it shines a light down the tube, the sample chamber, and it hits a photo detector. And what it does is it measures how much light goes through the sample chamber. If 100% of the light that goes through the sample chamber hits the detector, then the instrument knows there is no ethanol in the sample chamber. On the other hand, if you blow into the instrument and you have ethanol in your breath, that's what's, this is the ethanol, and you put the light source through the sample chamber, then it slightly decreases the amount of light that is passing through the sample chamber at a particular wavelength. Now what happens is, the more the light decreases, the higher the breath alcohol concentration that's measured on the device. One of the problems with breath alcohol testing is that there are other chemicals that can appear in human breath that will also cause the light to decrease at those wavelengths. One of the problematic chemicals is acetone. If you're a diabetic, you work around acetone and it's, you regularly breathe it, you may have acetone in your breath. If you work around jet fuel, there are other kinds of chemicals, especially in solvents and jet fuel, that can also register or decrease light at the same wavelength. So when you show the light source through the tube, you see a whole lot of light has decreased and it's not hitting the end of that photo detector. What happens then is the instrument thinks you have a very high breath alcohol concentration because so much light is being blocked in the sample chamber. When in fact, you have the exact same amount that we started with, but you have an additive effect of the acetone and the other things that are in your breath. And the instrument will read a very high breath alcohol concentration that's really not there. If you have a DWI arrest in Texas, and you took a breath test and they told you the result and you think to yourself, oh my goodness, can I possibly fight this case? Or is there anyone that can help me defend this case? I highly recommend that you hire an attorney that has a very good understanding of breath alcohol testing and understands how the instrument works and where the problems are. This is just one example of some of the problems that we'll find with intoxilizer instruments and there are others. Please give us a call if you've got a DWI in the North Texas area, Deandra M. Grant & Associates, 972-943-8500. Once again, that's 972-943-8500. Give us a call, come in and meet with us, and let's talk about your case and your breath test.